Shout out to Baby Smack. What up, YouTube? Today we're going to profile one of the most known but least talked about drug kingpins in all of California. He went by the name Fast Eddie. Edward Stanley Jr. was born April 1st, 1938. He will become one of the largest drug dealers on the west side of Los Angeles for more than three decades. Fast was a family man, well-dressed, and a hard worker. Fast Eddie was the owner of the Steakhouse Incorporated, also known as the Steakhouse. Incorporated December 24th, 1979. The steakhouse was located at 8620 Southwestern Avenue in Los Angeles in what we refer to as the a Trey Gangster Crips turf. All the big time gangsters, players, and hustlers from all around would visit the steakhouse to eat at Fast Eddie's spot. It was a very popular place during the 1980s and everybody that was somebody shared an experience at the steakhouse. Eddie was a friend of mine, Tootie was, rest in peace, he was a friend of mine. During the mid-80s, a lot of Crips began to mingle in with the high rollers at Fast Eddie's Steakhouse. One of the more notable OG Crips, Greg Batman Davis, provided security, friendship, and protection at the Steakhouse. In Batman's autobiography titled Greg Batman Davis, Original Gangster, he says the steakhouse often had live performances by blues acts, which drew an older crowd. There was rumors circulating in the streets that Fast kept legit business away from street business. So he didn't do any drug dealing at the steakhouse. Fast owned houses throughout LA County, including in Windsor Hills and Lower Ladera Heights. Eddie was deemed untouchable for a long time because the feds and local authorities, they had a good idea what he was doing, but they could never catch him in the streets dirty. He was too elusive and too smart. He even put businesses and property in his lady friend's name. But by 1990, the government labeled him the leader of an interstate drug trafficking ring. The organization allegedly operated from California to Tennessee including cities such as Memphis, Southgate, Downey, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Compton, and so on and so forth. They were on him, but they still couldn't catch him. After more than a two-decade run, things started to unravel for Fast. In February 1990, he was accused of assaulting Earl Frost Jr. at the steakhouse. Almost a year later, in January 1991, while on probation for a conviction of being a felon in possession of a firearm, Fast Eddie offered to sell cocaine to an undercover drug enforcement agent and asked the undercover agent could he obtain several handguns for him. The famous steakhouse would close soon after, and then in July of 1996, Despite having been previously convicted of being a felon in possession of a firearm, Fast Eddie tried to sell five ounces of heroin to another DEA agent, which was a confidential informant. He told the informant that he wanted to buy three 9mm handguns. The once so ever elusive and clever Fast Eddie was starting to do business in a questionable manner. The dudes he was starting to deal with, they weren't like the old school keep your mouth shut type of dudes. They were informants. 
in LA, you know, we we the way we rolled back in the early eighties, we had colds, you know, we didn't tell, we didn't snitch, we were the rats. We can't come and talk to her. We didn't take pictures, you know. And then in the mid-1990s, the FBI launched an 18-month investigation into Fast Eddie's drug ring. While listening in on wiretaps, they were able to slowly dismantle Fast operation. They seized $500,000 in cash that was hidden in a vehicle. They found 24 kilos of cocaine a bunch of stolen cars, and 26 guns, according to court documents. For at least two decades, Fast had managed to run his operation nice and smooth. So smooth that the FBI couldn't catch him alone. They needed the DEA, the Las Vegas Police Department, and the LAPD to assist them in trying to catch him red-handed. Allegedly, and according to newspapers, Fast Eddie's drug ring was tied to L.A. street gangs and a significant amount of the drugs was coming from Mexican drug organizations. These drugs included heroin and large amounts of cocaine. During a long-term investigation, agents seized about 714000 in cash and another 35 kilograms of cocaine. Fast was so up he was able to withstand these huge losses, over a million dollars in cash, nearly 100 kilograms of cocaine, and he lost a lot of cars laced with cocaine. Eddie hired nothing but the best lawyers to defend him on his criminal cases. However, his luck was beginning to run out. On October 11, 1996, FBI wiretaps revealed Fast Eddie was trying to off one of his workers in a murder for hire. Court documents point to the fact that Fast Eddie's worker ran off with $300,000 of his money. He allegedly told Daniel Bennett to kill Ricky Hall and also Tina Cage. Then on November 24, 1996, Fast Eddie told a drug lieutenant that he wanted to have his drug courier Charles Jones killed, but could not do it because the victim's wife would know that it was him that ordered the killing. On November 26, 1997, Edward Stanley allegedly laughed about the killing of Ricky Hall when the murder was described to him. And then in December, despite having been previously convicted of being a felon in possession of a firearm, Edward Stanley possessed a stockpile of more than 20 firearms. They finally got Fast Eddie. This time it would be for murder. And the prosecution thought about the death penalty. Fast Eddie hired a veteran defense lawyer who handled many high profile cases in the past. His lawyer said they would pursue every avenue that they could with the Justice Department to persuade them against asking for the death penalty. Fast Eddie was 58 years old at the time of this arrest, and he and his defendants pled guilty to life without the possibility of parole, which he later contested and tried to get out on the grounds that he didn't know it was a life sentence, and the fact that they used wiretaps and an informant. The informant had a faulty background and was a known liar. And the wiretaps were never approved by a court of law. But just before he could get his sentence overturned, Edward Stanley Jr., better known as Fast Eddie, died in federal prison September 15, 2011. Rest in peace to an entrepreneur, legit business owner, and street hustler, and L.A. legend. Fast Eddie.